to build really stupid machinery that poisons half the globe. Friends, uh, greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I beat again, geez. Starting us off a little differently today. Uh, a little bit of night from the uh, band I'm with, Passing Time. It's all about this kind of insanity. More of a uh, war-driven... Uh, oh, for those of you that know where the sample is from. Who knows? Somebody in the comment line mean where the sample is from. I guarantee someone knows. All right, friends, low def right here, high def up there. So unless you're live, this one here, you're going to want to click on the uh, high def. Exact same show. It's just going to look and sound better. Um, the massive Fukushima update time is here, and we are going to get right into it. This is from the... Uh, well, this was one of the most disturbing ones I find. Mining Awareness Plus, Critical Information and Awareness Site. Um... Dumping radioactive food from Japan on the world. The TPP is a disaster. How many of you have not realized that the very bad uh, trade agreement known as TPP is also going to lead to further poisoning? Um, economist Robert Reich, or as Rush Limbaugh says, Reich, has laid out the more general dangers of the TPP trade agreement in his recent piece, Why the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement is a Pending Disaster. However, the biggest risk is that it will allow Japan to dump all of its radioactive food on much of the world. In particular, 10 to 15 times more radiation is allowed in food in the U.S., Australia, Canada, and New Zealand than in Japan. The U.S. has the weakest standards of all, allowing food to have around 1,200 to 1,500 becquerels per kilogram. Um, that is radio, I don't like how they describe this, radioactive emissions per second. It's worse than that. I mean, that's what it is, but that doesn't help you understand why it's bad. Every second is a radioactive decay moment. And it's like a little tiny explosion. And at any point, it can hit any cell and mutate that cell. And then that cell won't die properly and it won't mutate again. We have a word for that. That word is cancer. The U.S. allows can cancerous food that even Japan won't allow when they grew it there. So they send it to us in New Zealand and Canada and Australia. The TPP will allow Japan to more easily export radioactive metal products as well. As well. It is also a backdoor to allow Japan to export radioactive food and goods to Europe. Unlike most of the English-speaking world, Europe got wise to Japan's radioactive food export plot and only accept Japanese food with 100 becquerels per kilograms of radiation, even though the European standard is 600. That's a really high number, too. Basically, there is no safe level of radiation when you're talking about this. There is none. There is. You can look that up from Chris Busby. You can look that up from Helen Caldicott. There are a lot of people. Arnie Gunderson, a lot of people will tell you this. What they're doing is the trade agreement isn't factoring in the fact that many things that are coming out of Japan are toxic. You should not buy a Japanese car. Why? Because you're going to have to get your parts from Japan to put into the car. Would you like a radioactive seat just glowing away every, every, every time you're in your car? Stay away from anything that's made in Japan. If that sounds harsh, maybe it is harsh. Maybe TEPCO shouldn't have opened it there. TEPCO is GE. Maybe you shouldn't invest in GE. That's why I do these shows. It says, this may also be an economic disaster, especially for the U.S. rice farmers, as Japan dumps its radioactive produce for cheap on the world. In other words, our country are, is going to allow our rice farmers who grow healthy food that, the, that is uh, nourishing to be replaced with cheap poison food from Japan. That's America today. They can then import food, which is presumed to be less radioactive, as recently seen by the urgency given to import U.S. French fries. Japan grows potatoes. So in other words, they are selling us their poison food for cheap. And we are sending them our best food. Normally I would yell, those of you that know me from the show, I snowboard and I have bruised this rib. 
So I cannot yell. My frustration, I can't yell. If I could, that camera would be shaking. Do you understand what's happening? They are selling our good food to Japan, while Japan sells to us its poison food. It says, while the U.S. was exporting, that would be sending out for you Kesha fans, some potatoes to Japan before Fukushima. They must certainly export more now. Who has ever heard of urgently flying french fries to another country as recently happened to a shortage of U.S. french fries in Japan because they won't eat their potatoes, but they want you to sell them to you? The well-known fast food chain doing the importing claims to use local produce, so the reason for imports appears clear. Neither they nor their Japanese customers want potentially radioactive french fries. No, so let's give it to America. We live in a country where somebody with absolutely no musical talent, with absolutely a god-awful voice like Katy Perry, can sing on the Super Bowl, and people think she can sing. Of course we're stupid enough to buy poison. Hell yeah, give us a double dose. And any nation that would call that tramp talented is definitely a nation that's already doomed. Makes me sick. Even in the same 100 becquerels per kilogram Japan radiation standard were to be implemented for all countries, and you can be certain that it will not be, 100 becquerels per kilogram is almost certainly more contaminated than food that is already grown in the U.S., Canada, or New Zealand. In other words, it's time that we stop eating and buying any food from Japan. It says, Japan whining and complaining over GM food is surely a lure. Yeah, they don't want GMOs there, but they'll sell radioactive food to the rest of the world. These people are just dreadful. It says, based on what Robert Reich says below, the TPP may also make it more difficult for countries to exit nuclear power without facing some sort of frivolous and secretive lawsuit. In other words, when you're trying to pull out of uh, radioactivity and nuclear power because it's deadly, they're going to penalize you for it. Projected on the side of a building in Spokane, Washington in 2013, the message against fast-track authority, which would restrict lawmakers' ability to weigh in or make changes to the deal, have been key in the fight against the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership Agreement. The reason? If the American people knew what was in this deal, they would never allow their members of Congress to vote for it. Republicans who now run Congress say they want to cooperate with President Obama. Oh, I'm glad we elected them, huh? But I didn't. And point to the administration's Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP, as a model. The only problem is the TPP would be a disaster. If you haven't heard much about the TPP, that's part of the problem right there. It would be the largest trade deal in history, involving countries stretching from Chile to Japan, representing 792 million people and accounting for 40% of the world economy, and it's being devised in secrets. Lobbyists from America's biggest corporations and Wall Street banks, who've already destroyed the nation in 08, we still haven't recovered, have been involved, but not the American public. That's a recipe for fatter profits and bigger paychecks to the top, and not a good deal for most of us, or even for most of the rest of the world. So, I mean, you can go to the article for more, but suffice to say they're doing everything that they possibly can to get this sent to us. And listen to this, here's more. This is from uh, FukushimaUpdate.com. Fishers submit request over TEPCO wastewater plant. They have no business still living there. Well, that's where my heritage of my family is. That's what happens when you bring nuclear power up. America did it. I may have to leave Ohio, where I was born, if a Davis Bessie ever melts down. Guess what? I'm going to leave. I don't care about whether or not, but you have roots here. To hell with those roots. They're radioactive. I'll go someplace where the roots don't grow. Glowing roots. Japanese fishers have demanded that the operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant gain their understanding before releasing decontaminated water into the sea. Maybe they shouldn't be allowed to do it at all under any circumstances, but no, that's just logic. The head of a national federation of fisheries cooperatives, Hiroshi Kishi, submitted the request to industry minister Yochi Miyazawa on Tuesday. 
The Nuclear Regulation Authority last week released a plan to discharge the contaminated water below government standards into the nearby Pacific Ocean from 2017 or later. The measure is aimed at reducing the amount of water stored in tanks in the plant's compound. In other words, so that TEPCO has, doesn't have to spend more money to build more tanks, they are going to dump it into the ocean by saying that it's under the limit. But first of all, the limit is deadly. And second of all, the limit was deadly before they've raised it repeatedly, which they have done. Why? So they can dump water into the ocean. That's why you can't eat anything from the Pacific Ocean. If you do, you're committing suicide. Don't live in California, Oregon, Washington. Don't do it. Why? Because you're poisoning yourself. Suicidal tendencies. That's why I'm wearing it today. The Nuclear Regulation Authority, oh, I'm sorry, the TEPCO Electric Power is operating wastewater treatment systems called ALPS to remove most radioactive substances, resulting in a huge number of storage tanks on the compound, which they should have to do and keep doing. The Fishers Federation says the plan is deplorable and strongly requests that the operator not release water without the understanding of the Fishers or others, who, of course, who shouldn't still be there. Maya Zalwa said there's no change to the policy of gaining local approval and carrying out measures against wastewater and not allowing easy release. After the talks, Kishi said that he was relieved to hear the minister's remarks. He stressed at the moment fishers do not approve the idea of releasing decontaminated water, even if it meets government standards. He added that he wants the nuclear regulators to know it as well. That's because there are some compounds that due to their structure cannot be taken out. You didn't know that, did you? Eanynews.com. NPR and California Department of Public Health appear on document with nuclear-related U.S. entities working together with TEPCO to dismantle Fukushima-related information. CDHP yesterday, West Coast Fukushima, West Coast will get no radioactive contamination from Fukushima. In other words, TEPCO met with people, bought them off, and then release the study as if you were too stupid to know that they bought them off. Listen to this. California Department of Public Health officials on January 7th, 2014, there is no public health risk at the California beaches due to radioactivity related to the events of Fukushima. Never mind the sea life washing up there. Never mind some people calling the floor of the Pacific Ocean a graveyard. Uh, never mind the fact that every time they test anything that they catch in the ocean in terms of tuna, it's deadly. The volume of water in the Pacific Ocean has a significant diluting effect, they lied, on radionuclides that are present, and it's not anticipated that they, concentration will release in the waters off the West Coast. It doesn't have to be concentrated. One atom ingested of plutonium will kill you. It'll hurt your health, and it will kill you. It does not have to be concentrated. It's all in the way that they word it. That's like saying, I'm going to put brass knuckles on and punch you. Well, never mind. I'll take the brass knuckles off and just punch you because that way it won't hurt. It does not have to be concentrated. Are we clear? They use that word to lie to you. Concentration has nothing to do with it. Perhaps the CDPH will provide information about the models that they base their statement on. In the meantime, here's what scientists and experts have to say. Quote, study, with a link to it, high concentrations of Fukushima radioactive material will reach the west coast of, Nor west coast of North America, entire coast to be affected from Alaska to Mexico. Can negatively affect human life for decades, I should raise concern. It could actually change your DNA. I look up uh, radioactive DNA Caldecott. That's her name. UPI, a Fukushima plume to reach U.S. west coast in months. Measurable increase in radioactive material. So they did know about it. Study, prolonged exposure for California lasting 10 years hits Hawaii early 2014, may already be surrounded. So why would the CDPH officials make such a claim? This doc claim, this documentary may help explain, and they have a documentary here at the E&E News site. I suggest that you look it up. Friends, I got three more stories to get to on your massive Fukushima update. I just want to remind you, do you know Passing Time, the band I'm in? Go. Uh, YouTube.com, uh, but just type in the Alexandrian Solution, Passing Time. That's my band. We're playing Buzzbin on first Friday, May 1st in Canton, Ohio. And you're going to come down, you're going to party with us, aren't you? And we're going to do some rum, and we're going to have a great time, ain't we? Okay, good. You're sloshed. You can't drive home. Call Change Taxi. Change Taxi anywhere near, I mean within like an 
even a two hour radius of Canton, Ohio. He'll take you all the way to Cleveland. Uh, he'll pick you up at the most god awful places ever. No matter what time you need him, you need to call Change a Taxi. I'm about to be calling it up here on my Facebook. And yep, best rates in town at Change Taxi. If you miss out on it, friends, you'll be hurt. So do me a favor. Don't forget about it. Don't just make it part of the show that you fast forward through to get to the rest of the Fukushima update. Believe me, this is something that is going to be a huge help. And again, Change Taxi in Uniontown, Ohio, they got their directory listing. Uh, tell Kenny you heard about it from the correct views. Friends, three more stories to get to. This brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. Uh, also, go back to Facebook.com. Look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, MC, MC Laughlin. And uh, let him know that you want to read some of his fiction because it's amazing and he's a proud sponsor of The Correct Views. Love having a writer as a sponsor. Radioactive tritium leak reported at TVA nuclear plant in northern Alabama. This is for all of you that doesn't think that anything uh, that has to do with radioactivity in Fukushima has to do with you. <clears throat> we know that the, uh, the earthquake, not the tsunami, caused many of the meltdowns. Therefore, you don't need a tsunami. You just need a big earthquake. And we have fault lines here in the U.S., obviously. A Chattanooga newspaper reports that radioactive water leaked from a tank at the Alabama nuclear plant, releasing tritium into the environment. It's deadly. The report said that the leak occurred last week at the Browns Ferry nuclear power plant near Athens, Alabama, which should not be there. Look at it. It's sitting on the water, just like, just like Fukushima. It looks just like Fukushima. So when a, you know an earthquake happens and water hits it, Hey, we have a model, don't we? It's in Japan. A spokesman for the Tennessee Valley Authority, which operates the plant, said that the leak was quickly contained and presented no public risk. Why, sure. The TVA said a drain line leaked 100 to 200 gallons of water containing tritium levels above acceptable drinking water standards. And, of course, the uh, tooth fairy came down and cleaned it up before it could become a danger. Uh, in a report to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the TVA said it increased monitoring of water around the plant, but hasn't detected elevated tritium levels outside the plant. Tritium is a radioactive form of hydrogen that occurs in nature and is also a byproduct of nuclear fission. Alright guys, uh, two more to get to. This one is terrifying. I've been saying for a long time that one of the reasons why Iran should not have a nuclear power plant, why I cheer every time that they uh, have any setback is because they're living in a war zone. Now, I don't mean I'm talking against Muslims. I mean, we're talking about two sides of Muslims that can't even get along with themselves. They have long wanted to get their hands on anything, tritium in water, anything, and uh, basically blow it up on a, on a glorified bomb and send the particles everywhere. Well, according to InfoWars, uh, police say they discovered a radioactive device in a car on Kings Highway in Fairfield, Connecticut. Police shut down Kings Highway after the discovery, according to NBC Connecticut, and the device was examined by both the state police bomb squad and the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. So far, police have not released details on how the radioactive device ended up in the car. It's looking like maybe it wasn't terrorist-related, but the point being, that is how easy it is. That's how easy it is. If he was going to blow it up, he'd have just blown the car up as soon as the police got by it. Right there on King's Highway. You know, with Jim Morrison, ride the King's Highway. Yeah, all the way over. So anybody, you know, driving by would just drive it right across the straight, straight stay, states with uh, the radioactive elements on their car. Uh, last story I'm going to get to. Normally I do the dumb D of the day. Uh, this is not, I'm not going to say it's a dumb D. I'm going to say I don't agree with it. But the gentleman that left it on my comment line, I told him I didn't believe in it, and he gave me some things that he's using as uh, data to uphold his belief. I'm going to say before I do it that I think that this is wrong, what I'm about to read you. However, it pays to be polite. And sir, you were very polite and very kind on my comment line. So listeners, what do you think? What do you think the truth is? Here we go. The argument that Fukushima was sabotaged. This is from uh, HenryMcCall.com. Former analysis and Jim Stone argues that there was no magnitude 9.0 earthquake. And the person that uh, wrote this has gotten a lot of hot water for uh, supposedly exposing it. 
The tsunami was caused by nuclear bombs in the sea, and the Fukushima explosion and meltdown was caused by many nukes hidden in cameras installed by an Israeli security firm. That did not happen, in my opinion. It just doesn't. The motive? Punish Japan for offering to enrich Iranian uranium and staying, straying from the Illuminati diktat. This website reserves judgment but offers this introduction by James Fargan in the spirit of free discussion. It would be way too hard to actually pull this off, friends, but here we go. When we compare a 6.8 magnitude earthquake, which devastated Kobe, Japan, January 7th of 95, with Fukushima, the evidence does not stack up, it says. A quick Google images search of Kobe reveals incredible destruction of buildings, bridges, elevated highways, and other infrastructure. The Fukushima quake, magnitude 9.0, struck about 70 kilometers off the coast of Japan on March 11th, 2011. It sent a 15 meter tsunami crashing over perfectly undamaged bridges houses, roads, and cars, over a populace which had not been warned of the incoming tsunami because there was no magnitude 9 earthquake. Um, I have looked up some of the footage. There are a lot of undamaged bridges and houses. However, I do remember March 11th, 2011. Uh, my friend Giselle and I were uh, texting back and forth. And when the earthquake hit, they were given a tsunami warning. They just didn't know it was going to be that large. So I do know that part of that isn't true. They were taken completely off guard. Uh, not entirely true. Yet helicopters were waiting and people all over Japan got to watch the tsunami roll in on live TV. What on earth was going on? Ordinarily, the Japanese people are warned of tsunamis. Why weren't they warned? Well, they were. Why was there no structural damage? No reason for them to suspect that a tsunami was coming. That is interesting there. But again, it happened further out, so I'm not on board with this. The quake must have seemed like nothing special to a nation of people who were used to quakes. In a video taken in one Tokyo newsroom during the Fukushima quake, staff were seen to continue typing at their computer stations. Well, that happens all the time in Cali, too. A 9 magnitude earthquake is more than 100 times stronger than a 6.8. A 9.0 should have David devastated everything within a 1,000 kilometer radius. There should have been widespread urban carnage, even worse than what Kobe suffered. Yet the Fukushima quake did not cause a single structure to collapse. I think it happened too far into the water, and I think it was too deep. Um, but it says, don't take my word for it. Go look up the helicopter footage on YouTube. There's links. Look at the infrastructure the tsunami was crashing into. Not the slightest bit of damage. Common sense is enough to make you wonder. Wonder, yes, but again, I think it happened too far out. Jim Stone did more than wonder. He dug up and analyzed the Japanese seismograms. He proved that there was no 9.0 earthquake and no epicenter at, out at sea. Instead, there were three simultaneous, simultaneous quakes of much lesser magnitude, all of them in land. Um, it's interesting to note, I will concede to this, that we have done things like this. Uh, we, I think we blew Bikini Island into uh, sand crystals, if I'm not mistaken. The authorities lied about the 9.0 quake, made it up out of whole cloth. An earthquake did not cause the tsunami. There must have been another cause. It says the reactors were destroyed by nukes. I see, I just don't buy it. it it's too hard to set that up for one thing. Too many people work there, too many people would notice you doing it. It turns out that the official explanation for the Fukushima reactor explosions was bogus as well. Nuclear power containment walls are extremely thick and strong. Hydrogen explosions could never have destroyed them. That's not true. Um, anybody remember the Hindenburg? Uh, as a historical reference, hydrogen explosions occurred at Three Mile Island and caused no structural damage, not even any injuries to plant personnel. Well, that just meant it was a smaller hydrogen explosion. That doesn't, that doesn't sell me at all. Um, furthermore, Reactor 4 contained no fuel on the tsunami day and was therefore non-operational. Yet it exploded and was destroyed as completely as were the other reactors that day. That's interesting. I'll concede there that's interesting, but I think that was the work of the uh, destruction as a whole. Reactor 4 is like Building 7 at the World Trade Center, an utter impossibility. I do agree on that. A blatant smoking gun. A reactor containing no fuel cannot operate. A non-operational reactor cannot explode unless someone explodes it. The destruction of Reactor 4 
could only have been the result of sabotage. Um, I don't know enough about nuclear um, nuclear plant operations. Is that sentence true? Can a non-operational um, reactor face a hydrogen explosion after an earthquake and a tsunami? I don't have the answer. Somebody leave it in my comment line. There's a lot of people that are far smarter than me that listen to this show. Israeli involvement. In February 2010, Japan offered to enrich uranium for Iran. Soon thereafter, an Israeli firm by the name of Magna BSP secured a contract to run security at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. They installed oversized cameras strongly resembling gun-type wep nuclear weapons. There is a strong evidence, they say, that they planted Stuxnet, an Israeli computer virus that attacks Siemens power plant control systems, and which Israel previously used to damage Iran's nuclear program. Magna BSP also established internet data links in the reactor cores in blatant violation of international nuclear regulations. Well, why don't I believe there were nuclear devices in the cameras? because the nuclear power plant scans to see if there's any radioactivity anywhere. If you had a nuclear bomb in a freaking video camera, I hope to tell you that their monitoring systems would pick it up the moment you brought it into the ground. So uh, not much even, especially once you had it hung up. So I, that does not fly with me at all, anybody else. All 12 members of that security team returned to Israel in the week before 9 uh, 311. In the aftermath of the disaster, the Israelis publicly monitored the reactor cores via their illegal internet data links, yet no one took them to task for this. Well, if it was illegal, they should have. So what caused the tsunami and destroyed the reactors? It says, uh, according to Jim Stone, using skills honed as a former NSA analyst with the engineering background, Jim Stone concluded that Israel was behind the destruction of the Fukushima plant. Now he's paying the price. And it talks about uh, all the things he has to go through because people think he's nuts. Stone proved that there was no 9.0 magna magnitude earthquake that caused the tsunami. The tsunami must have been artificially induced, perhaps by an atomic bomb placed in the Japan Trench. Again, we have satellites. We have, uh, we, th there's, this is not going to happen. You think China's going to allow you to put nuclear bombs in the Japan Trench without any of their satellites picking it up? Not going to happen. The tsunami was blamed for flooding the reactors and causing the explosion, but Stone presents compelling evidence that Israeli destroy, Israel destroyed the Fuku plant by installing gun-type nuclear weapons in the guise of security cameras of mine and set them off in the aftermath. No, the earthquake was so strong that without the tsunami, it caused meltdowns. Stone demonstrates that the Stuxnet virus continues to distort sensor readings at the disaster site to this day. Yes, that virus is everywhere, and yes, Israel is to blame for that. But again, this whole blame Israel for everything thing, that BS. Unlike many others in the world of whistleblowers, Stone bases his conclusions on hard evidence and unassailable logic. Anyone can review and challenge his work. He is open to it, and that's what we're doing. So, friends, that is one theory on what happened. Do I think that's what happened? No. But a listener who has spent a lot of time with this has repeatedly asked me to cover it, and I've covered it. Now, you, the listeners, decide, is it real or is it BS? Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off. Um, make sure you look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. We are posting all the time on TheMediaSpeaks.com. Also, please donate to the show if you can. You can donate at TheCorrectViews at Hotmail.com. And every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. And let me let you in what I'm working on here real quick, guys. What I'm trying to do is to make this show my job. I want to turn this into a three-hour program that runs five days a week, either Monday through Friday or some people like Tuesday through Saturday because there's never anything on Saturday before the Sunday shows. I'd be open to either one. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's going to cost like 25 grand to take a year off work. Let's face it. You really can't live these days for under 25 grand. So I'm trying to find a way to raise some money so that I can make this my job. And if you are in a position to make that happen, join my advertisers and Help me, help me do this, and I'll make sure I'm here all the time for you, friends. Good night. God bless.